Hey there! Here we are fashionably late to the Comet party because we just got back from France and we were gone for quite some time. Two months, yeah. Two months! It's a lot of time. So here we are. Um, we're gonna capture the green comet. We actually already have, we got kind of like a quick glimpse, no, a, cl a quick capture of it as soon as we landed back in the States, but we wanted to give it another go. So right now it's really, really close to Mars and we wanted to get both of them in the same frame. So in this video, you're going to see us uh, capture the comet twice. So the first time uh, we went out to the desert and the comet was you know, approaching Mars and we went out with our wide telescope here, the ASCAR FRA500, and uh, our full frame camera to really have a nice view and fit both together. Uh, but on the second night, which was supposed to be the best one to capture it very close uh, to Mars, we uh, had a cloudy night here, so we were able to instead uh, image it remotely from our telescope in Utah at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. So you will see that both times uh, the comet and Mars are in there, but the second night was obviously the best. Yep. And our first mosaic, so you will see if it turned out good or not. Woof. So here we are out in the field for what seems like the first time in forever, definitely the first time this year, to capture the comet. And we have to get it now because it's getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, so hopefully it still looks nice today, uh, no idea, but we'll try our best. So behind we have the telescope ready to go. Um, it is the ASCAR FRA500 f5.6, but with a reducer and full frame camera, we have a much wider field of view. We now have a f3.9 telescope, so um, I really hope we can fit both the comet and Mars in the same frame. It's going to be very difficult. Tomorrow will be much easier, but tomorrow is cloudy, so we came today and hopefully uh, they hopefully will still fit it. in one frame. First time in three months on the field, which was a long time. We took Stella and she had a lot of fun as usual. She loves being there. It quickly became chilly once the sun went down, but we were excited to spend just one hour on this because instead of you know, spending the night there as usual and freezing to death, we can just spend an hour and then go home. Okay, it's time to input the coordinates on Nina. So to find the comet, you just go on like, for example, the Sky Live, and you type the comet's name. So in our case, it's uh, E3ZTF. And on this page, you can see if you scroll down the coordinates in uh, real time. So right now I can input the RA, which is four hours, 50 minutes and 18 seconds. And the deck, which is 29, 0, 2, 32. It should be right here. So in our case, I think Mars is close by. And I just have to find where it is. We were going to slew to this anyway and um, see what happens. I want to make sure there is no cables getting stuck. I forgot to take off the pole master. Oh crap. Eh. Oh crap. We're good. It's been so long, you know. <laughs> Alright, so we're trying to frame both Mars and the comet. We found the comet, which is right there. Uh, the question is, where is Mars? So, compared to the tail, I think Mars should be just out of the frame here on the right side. So I'm going to try to put the comet more in the top left corner and hope that Mars is going to pop up. So by the good grace of the stars, we somehow managed to find the comet and Mars and put them together in this frame here, which was so crazy insane. I think we had to rotate the camera to do it, but the thing is we got it. So now that we have this all set up, it's already imaging. So we're gonna be here for about an hour and we're gonna get data and then we're gonna head on home because it's cold as heck out here. So instead of one hour, we only spent 15 minutes imaging because Exactly one year after finding Stella abandoned in the desert, we found a second abandoned dog. We couldn't do much because Stella was with us and this dog looked much scarier, so we called animal control and packed up super fast. We know they went the next morning, so we hoped that the dog was found and safe, but we couldn't do much more this time. And so here is a final image, only 15 minutes, and as you can see it's not amazing, but it's still cool to see both Mars and the comet.
And so like we said earlier, it was cloudy here on the night of the closed approach. So sadly, we were unable to go to the desert, but we used our remote telescope in Utah to capture the comet uh, and Mars. So this time, I decided to do a two-panel mosaic for the very first time ever, finally. And so one with the comet centered and the second panel with Mars uh, centered. So Mars looks very uh, what a huge crazy and try. glowy. It looks incredible. Um, and together, I love it. So I did 30 second exposures uh, times 15, I think, for each uh, f filter. And because we were using three filters, R, G, and B, and two panel mosaic, uh, it was a pain to process because you have um, you know, three starless files, three uh, files for the comet alignment, three files for the star alignment. In short, a, it was a mess. It was a mess on my dashboard, yeah. So it was a pain to process, but it was worth it. I really love the result. Uh, Mars looks so impressive and so huge compared to the comet. And you can see the comet to the tail. Oh, it's great. I love it. And so uh, I'm really, really happy about this picture. And um, yeah, I hope you like it too. I think one of the biggest things that we are very, very happy that we have is that we have remote observatory access with UDRO. And because it was cloudy here in Las Vegas that night, the fact that we had another opportunity to capture the same thing somewhere else. Yeah, if we, didn't have, if we didn't have that, then we would never have this image, which is crazy. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys liked this image. I'm sure you will like the second one more than the first one. Uh, <laughs> same for us. And uh, yeah, um, we'll try to make more videos coming soon. Now that we're back and um, clear skies.